Hello everyone, have you ever found it difficult to easily see and understand clashes in Navis works, especially on a big project with millions of items in the coordination model? Well, let me show you today an easy way to make not just yourself, but also your team members and everyone else in design coordination meetings fully understand clashes in your model to make informed decisions on resolving them. Let's say we want to look at clashes between architectural walls and structural columns. We can select this test here and then go to results. So Navisworks has done a good job on showing me the elements in each clash and the same goes for the other two clashes below. The problem is, it's not easy for me to understand from just this view where this clash is in the building and what are the surrounding objects so I can make a more informed decision on resolving this clash. Of course, you can try to play with what Navisworks already gives you. In this case, we have all the other elements hidden. If I now uncheck this box, you will see them again. But now they are blocking our clashing objects. We can try to do auto review and it will try to hide elements so we can see our clash. But as you can see here, it's not very really useful in this case anyway. Even if I go now to another clash. So with this one, it's quite good because we can see the clashing objects. But as soon as I zoom out or maybe pan or up the view a bit, I can no longer see the clashing elements. So not very really useful. The last option you have here is to dim other objects. If I now click on this, everything apart from the two clashing objects will be put in wireframe mode. So if I now return to this class here and this one here as well, that's what happened. To be fair, this should be easy to then give you the context of the clash if this were a much smaller building. However, even for this office of a very typical size, I can already say this is a massive web of lines that is more confusing than helpful and I still cannot easily make out where the class is in my building. Luckily, there's a solution and it's called RV Class Box. Let's go back to the default view of the model now. And maybe let's see the whole building again. I can now generate optimized views to see the classes in this class test using RV Class Box. Simply go to the RV Boost tab and click on RV Class Box. It's a docking window just like the class detective one. I can also pin it. In here, RV Class Box has listed for me all the same class tests that I have under Class Detective. If I now even delete a test, maybe this first one there, there's no classes there, I can just right click and choose Remove. It has now gone from RV Class Box as well because this list here is live and always stays up to date. If I try to add a new test, so I have now test one there. If I now go down this list there, test one is also here. Anyway, let's see some clashes, shall we? Going back to the test we checked out before, walls versus column, I can now select it here. Like that. Before generating views, I can quickly set some options here so my views will be optimized. The first option is to set the status of the clash you want to process. In this case, we have new, active, reviewed, approved, and resolved. The same statuses you have here in Class Detective. With this one, everything is new, but if I now scroll down, for maybe ceilings versus MEP, we have 19 classes in total, but only 11 of them is active. The rest are reviewed or approved. If I want to generate views for only active classes, I can select ceiling versus MEP here and only tick the box for active, this one there. Anyway, let's go back to our first test. So in this case, I want to do only new clashes. Let's now move the tick box to new. The second option to select is whether you want new views to be in perspective or orthographic mode. These are the same two modes we have here in the 3D view of Navisworks. If I now right click on this cube, I can set it to be either perspective or orthographic. Now it looks more like Revit. Maybe you want this kind of style for your new views. In that case, simply choose orthographic from here. For me, I'm more of a perspective kind of guy. So let's go back to perspective. The next option is to specify how transparent the context elements will be in our views. If I go back to results for a moment. So all those elements that are now in wireframe, RV class box, we'll put them into transparent mode. 
just so we can clearly see our clashing objects. You can set them to be more transparent by sliding this to the right or less transparent by taking it back to the left. At 0% they will be fully solid. For me the sweet spot is about 75% so let's take it back there. Then the final option to specify here will be the offset of our section box. This is how we can tell RV class box to generate the section box for each view of each class in the right dimensions. Let me show you what that means. If I for example select this class here and then hide other elements, we can now select these two objects and go to view or viewpoint to enable sectioning. I can now set the sectioning mode from planes to box and then make it so the box will fit my selection. So I'll do fit selection there. Here we go. As you can see, the box is only big enough to fit the selection that I made. But this is no good for seeing our context elements. So before having RV class box, I often had to do this manually. I had to go to scale and then scale the box this way, make it a bit bigger, this way as well, and also this way. You can of course scale it in three directions at once. With that done, I can go back to select. And now finally I can see the context elements of my clash. Sometimes I have to also move the box a bit up or down to actually see my class objects. In this case, it's still hard to see them because the context is not transparent. But you get the idea, this is quite a lengthy process. Imagine I have to do this for not three, not two, but a thousand clashes. That would take me a lot of time. With RV class box, however, this whole process of applying and resizing the box is fully automated. I can simply go here and specify how much this section box should extend above, below, at the front, at the back, on the left, and then on the right of my clashing objects. Let's make sure we have the class test selected, walls versus columns, and then click on generate views. Here we go, that's done now. That was a bit quick to see, but if you look at this site viewpoints panel, we have now this new folder here that contains three views below it. These three views, they come directly from our three new clashes for this test. If I now go to the first view there, maybe make it a bit bigger, I can now super easily see these two clashing objects from before, but now with much better context. So I can understand there's a column there, and maybe there's a room there, another one here, a bigger room on the left, and this may be a corridor of some kind. I can also check it out in section, so maybe going this way. I now know this is part of a foundation because this pile will go down much further than this. If we now go to the second view, the same thing appears. I can see now these two crushing objects can now be easily viewed and understood. Third view as well. This one is a bit more complex, but thanks to RV glass box, I can now understand this glass appears in a stairwell. And to resolve it, I need to be careful not to clash with the stair itself or maybe the services next to the stairwell. These views, by the way, are still fully editable. Let's say I want to make this stay a bit more solid because somehow it's very important for me to understand this clash. I can simply select the objects that I need. So maybe this run, this one, and the landing, and then go to item tools. And here, as you can see, I still have full control over the appearance of my selected objects. So if I want to make them solid, just slide this one down to zero. And now they are solid. Same thing with the section box. If I now go to sectioning tools, I can still move the box like I did before. But instead of starting from scratch, I have something of the right dimensions already that I can suddenly further tweak and adjust to my preference. Just like that. With this clash, however, I may want to see less of the context on the sides and more of what happening above and below my clash because this one is a stairwell after all. That's super easy to do. Let's go back to RV class box, select the same class test again, walls and columns, 
But this time, let's reduce the front, back, left and right offset values. How about we dial this one down to maybe 500 mil, and the same for these three boxes. For the top offset, I actually want to increase it to maybe 3 meters, and the same for base offset now. Apart from this, I also want to make the context a bit less transparent, so let's take this one down to maybe 50%. I want the new views to be orthographic, and with that all set, I can now click on Generate Views again. Here we go. RV Class Box has generated three more views, and they are now under this new folder. With the same name, but with this number, because you cannot have two folders with the same name here anyway. If I now go to this third view there, as you can see, my section box is now fully optimized according to my new preference. And the context elements, if I now go and select this one, for example, under item tools, I can see now transparency is now 50%, not 75 like before. Very nice. Also, as you can see, we have here not two, but three clashing objects. This is because this clash here is not a single clash, it's actually a group of two clashes. Let me show you here. If I go back to Class Detective, under Walls versus Beams, actually Walls versus Columns, when I go to Results, this clash here is a collection of, oh, not two, but actually six clashes. If I now zoom in here, I can see, yeah, we have not three, but six items in this clash, all in the same place. As you can see, however, RV Class Box has dealt with this very well, because when I go to here, to this view, all of these six objects have been highlighted for me in here with the same colors. So regardless of whether you are doing individual clashes, or doing class groups instead, all of that information will be respected and processed accordingly by RV Class Box. Another benefit of using this plugin is this. As you probably are aware of, we only have Class Detective in Navisworks Manage. I can go to here, choose About, and you can see there I'm using Navisworks Manage. If I were using Navisworks Simulate or Freedom, the free version, I wouldn't be able to use this command to detect clashes. Anyway, with RV Class Box, you can have just one person on the team running class detection. That person can then use this plugin to export these clashes into site viewpoints. Any other team members can do this. Open Divers Force Freedom, go to Open, and choose a font that the other person has produced, and then open it. They can then go to View, Windows, and turn on site viewpoints. And certainly enough, you can see now I have the same folders that I have in Manage, and if I expand any of them now, I have the same views. When I click on this one, for example, it's the same view from before, but now accessible for free. So anyone on the team can understand those classes better, leading to much better decisions in resolving them, all for a much lower cost. Even better, anyone generating these views doesn't have to do it test by test. If I now go and open up Class Detective one more time, let's say I want to do it for more than one test at once. How about we go for Ceiling versus MEP and Walls versus MEP, these two tests. Super easy, I can go back to RV Class Box now, select Ceiling versus MEP there, scroll down, hold down my control key and click on the second test. You can choose more like that, but for now, let's go for two only. So with multiple tests selected, I can simply adjust my preference one more time, like this. Maybe take this one out of the way, set the view to how I want it to look from an initial angle, and then click on Generate Views. Okay, that is done now. Because I selected two class tests, I have now two new folders under Save Viewpoints. The first one has about 11 views below, and that was less than the total number of clashes. If I go back to Class Detective now, Ceiling versus MEP has 19 clashes in total, but only 11 active ones and 0 new. In the setup, I selected new and active, that's why we have here 11 views, not 19. And of course, just like before, 
each view is optimized so I can see the classes where they are in the building and then I can certainly do the same for the second test war versus MEP and you can see there very nice to see and understand just like we want it to be and now some bonus tips for you if you want to maybe change something in the view if I go to this first view here and let's say I want to make the section box a bit wider let's try that now go to scale scale it this way if you want to keep this new state of the box make sure to go back to the view right click and then choose update otherwise it won't be saved and the next time you return to this view the box will be narrow again the second tip is to change your section in color when you try RV class box on your computer the section lines may not be as wide as I have them here usually if I go to options and choose interface sectioning this color is the color of section lines that you have in the view so by default it will be red that's what you will see if you didn't change this color I usually recommend setting this to white just because you have here the classing elements colored in red so having section lines in a different color will help reduce confusion and make you understand the view easier the final tip is if you want to reset the view in other words you want to remove the box and make the context elements solid again simply return to RV class box and click on reset the current view this will then reset the view to whatever the default state is in the model if you want to go back to one of the views we have generated of course the graphic overrides will still be preserved all right there you have it if you want to try RV class box completely for free simply go down to the video description and use the link there to get your copy for now enjoy using RV class box to make the preparation work for your design coordination meetings much more efficient and I'll see you in the next video